Hello, this is Dr. Dave Gatros for CDA 3100. Um, hopefully you've uh, reviewed the uh, video I did on flip-flops, uh, which shows how a circuit maintains its state. And uh, what I want to show you right now is a clocked uh, flip-flop. Now, a clocked flip-flop uh, is more realistic. In the previous flip-flop I showed you, that was just a asynchronous circuit, which is not something that's usually built. This is more realistic. In other words, the uh, the set and reset are only sent through on a positive clock edge or a falling edge. In the case of a falling edge, we'd have to have uh, two clock sequences here. But this is a very, very simple viewpoint of it. So here's what here. Here is our basic flip-flop, and I'll outline it for you. This is our, our basic flip-flop right there that we did before. But R and S, what we're doing is we're sending those through a couple of NAND gates. Okay, which actually acts as a, uh, a, a circuit that prevents the RNS from going through until the clock is actually turned on. <clears throat> All right, so, or actually in this case, it's turned off because we're using NAND gates. Let me show you a simulation. Okay, now I've got the clock right there, and I could use just a regular pin or a button to turn it on and off, but I thought I'd show you what a clock looks like. So here's the clock. And that's actually uh, taken from up here, this little symbol right there. We put the clock right there. It's uh, facing uh, uh, east. Uh, now to simulate, what we do is we go to the frequency, and we set the frequency. And we can set it to very low or very high. Now this is, isn't exactly um, 1 hertz, 2 hertz. It's, it's, it's a simulation of it, so it's much, much slower. So we're going to set the frequency of about 2 hertz. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the clock on. I'm going to say ticks enable. So now you'll see the clock go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you'll see that since set is set to 1, Q is turned on, Q naught is turned off. And um, uh, that's what's going through. Now we want to do reset. Now what I have to do here is I have to turn the uh, S off. Let me do my poke tool. And I'll turn S off, turn it to 0 and then I'll turn R on to 1. Now you notice I did it in that sequence. Uh, the reason I did so is because if I didn't do it in that sequence uh, it would be an unstable state and what it would do is it would detect an oscillation in here where the uh, signal was coming back and uh, back through. And it would be an error. Uh, there are circuits we can put in front of this to actually prevent it. But this is an example of a clocked RS flip-flop. One other note, okay, uh, you'll hear me talk about the flip-flops, latches, and registers. And uh, I just want you to notice that um, a group of flip-flops that are sensitive to a pulse duration, in other words, how long it's going to stay on, is called a latch. A group of flip-flops sensitive to pulse transition, which is what this is, is called a register. Now, a register can always replace a latch, but the reverse is not always true. Not always true. Um, now this is an example of maintaining a state. Fortunately, in uh, we'll stop the trans, we'll stop the simulation here. Fortunately, what we have in uh, Logislim is we actually have memory items in here. We have a DET and JK and SR flip flops uh, that we can actually show you. This is actually called a clocked uh, SR or RS flip flop. All right. Well, I hope this uh, you enjoyed this video. Look forward to doing the next one. Have a good day.